Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Vine. And welcome to Space, 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 Space. Hey everyone, my name is Dave and today we're going to be reviewing Alien Frontier from Starling Games, one of my favorite companies. Now, this game is about making colonies on a moon that you're trying to mine as well and when you put down your last colony whoever has the most points wins now the theme is not too thick but it matches the gameplay you have these dice which are ships you'll be rolling those dice and depending on what the face faces are you're going to be uh, either gathering materials colonizing the moon or stealing some stuff from your friends or opponents but without further ado we need to go check out what's in, the, in this box because hmm, i smell goodness let's go okay so here's what comes in the box of alien frontiers from starling games and the production of course is stellar Cardboard components being the board is pretty big. You'll get to see most of it uh, when the how to portion comes up. Then you have your scoring tablet, pretty thick cardboard. And then we have the cardboard up top, which is the territory tiles. I've made them look all pretty for you, but I'm gonna destroy them. And they just have double sides here, of double, double kind of text of things that you'll actually be trying to, to accomplish in the games. And then the middle. Oh, look at the beautiful colors and the big bulkiness of plastic and dice. The dice are pretty good. Um, I would say they weigh a little bit lighter than um, average dice, but they're still top-notch quality, and I love the blue and green color, and I even like the red color, too. Yellow, I could take or leave it. And then you have the colonies in every color, and yes, you can pop the bubble off of it. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain to get it back on, but each one of the colors will have eight of their respective colonies along with their little rocket ship look at that it's a rocket ship Pshum. and then you have the field generators right here the green one being the best of course and i don't think that the ore and the energy have ever looked this nice in an alien frontiers game this looks like metal it could easily fool me and then you have uh the uh, energy pieces i remember them being cardboard last time i played so these are like chunky like see-through plastic pieces i really like the energy pieces quite a bit and then the little odds and ends you got this dice that you'll be using of course these go to the en energy generators and that is pretty much it other than the cards up here and the art on them are okay uh, they do have a nice linen finish so the space theme isn't immediately win me over but it's not deterring me as well so that is what you got in the box now let me show you how to play this game Okay, so this is the game set up for basically two players, um, and I'm going to go over most of the rules, and these generators here, there's the downgraded version of the uh, Starling, made a beautiful generators here. Now, these alter the rules just a tiny bit, I'm not going to go over those, I'll let you go over those yourself, but the game board is set up right here. The goal of the game is to make all eight of your colonies and have the most points after the uh, first person lays their last colony down. That ends the game immediately, and you'll be calculating your points, which will be right here. And that's where these rockets come into play. You put them down here, and you'll be checking up the points, so everybody knows how many points everybody has. So it'll be strategic in placing their last colony. If they're really behind, they might not place their last colony if they have the opportunity to D2. In order to make those colonies, you have to send out your ships, which are these dice here. And you start with three in the beginning of the game, and you can build all the way up to having six ships. You use these ships to earn ore and um, energy here, and this will help you build ships and ore colonies. There's other ways that you can spend stuff, but basically you'll roll these. And the cool thing about this game is everything is based on the board. It's really easy to see what does what and low numbers of dice aren't necessarily bad. Every face of the dice has a good side. And that's one of the coolest things about this game, in my opinion. So in this case, I'm going to go over here with this ore. I'm going to explain this one here first. If you go right here and place a dice, you get just one ore, flat out. Now, if anybody else wants to place their dice and get uh, ore here, they would have to place something that was higher. So they can go with two, or they can go with something that's equal, or they could put another one. But if somebody goes ahead and places a five, and get to, oh, or nobody can place anything behind that five unless it is 
a five or six, and sometimes there, there are things that do break that roll. Now that's how you get ore, and you get the energy a bit easier. You can just place a dice up here, and whatever number you place, it tells you how many you get. So two, two and one, uh, you get one energy, and three and four, you get two, and five and six, you get three uh, energy. Now, energy is a lot easier to get than ore, so that's why you can kind of stack it up pretty quickly. Now, once you have both of those energies, you can go to different places. You can um, go to this spot down here, and this is where you can uh, build a colony for cheap, but you would have to place a dice down here, and every time you place the dice, doesn't matter what number it is, this chicks up one, and you have to chick it up all the way over here, and then you'll be able to buy a colony for one energy, one ore, and uh, then you can place it on this moon that you're trying to mine and or colonize. That's good because if you're trying to go to the colony down here, you'll have to have triples of the number. It doesn't matter what number it is, you just have to have triples of them. And then you have to pay three ore and you can't really see it, but um, there it says colonies right down there. So you have triples and you pay three ore, you can get colonies just like you did when you were chicken up on this board here. And that's how you build colonies and to get ships you would have to get two dice that are equal over here and then you could pay some um, ore and or uh, energy to get more ships and then uh, it gets more expensive as it goes up and you get all six of their dice and it's nice to have multiple dice because you'll be executing more things than other people if they have few of course now there are other ways you can get different things you can terraform here if you go up here uh, you have to be a solid six and you can pay the cheapo price el cheapo one energy and one ore and get a colony like that um, but this dice goes away boom so you have to earn it back you can also steal from your opponents if you want some ore or energy or some of their cards and we'll go over cards here in a second well you go right here and then you can steal some of their stuff now the cards like I was saying you'll go up here and then you would get one of these cards here and you can hang on to them and they have effects like gain one victory point just flat out easy one or they have double effects here your opponent may not steal from the Raiders post if they try to steal from them, they can't do it and if they try to steal a card from you they have to discard a card so some of those have ongoing effects and some of them just give you flat out victory points. So those are the cards that have a lot of different ones that vary up, which are pretty interesting. Now the moon has ways that you'll actually be doing stuff too. It has uh, special bonuses. My two are these, my two favorites are these here. Uh, the first ship you dock on a lunar mine each turn, you uh, may have any value. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to have at six if somebody's trying to block you. And if you have this one in tangent, pay one less ore than normal when colonizing the contractor. Those are my two favorite ones to go to. You can really start ramping up your colonizer colonies and you get those by having the majority colonies in the area or other things that are yours now if somebody else were to come in here and colonize they would take this card if it was in front of you and they would get the benefit and that's pretty much it you'll continue to do that rolling the dice placing your dice and your dice come up at the end of your turn so they stay there and annoy people the whole time until you pick them up and then you can keep on doing that until somebody lays down their last colony and then after that you count up your rocket points and whoever has the most wins and that's how you play alien frontiers now let's give you my opinion and give this game a grade let's go that's how you play Alien Frontiers, and oh hell yeah, I like this one, 92. This game I actually played at one time at a convention where I was a herald showing people how to play, and uh, I was with my um, convention buddy Patrick Hiller, thank you uh, so much for chilling with me that day, uh, and I got to play half of a game of not this uh, revision, of Alien Frontiers, and then I had to go teach somebody. Um, I think I was teaching them Spectarium that, that, that year, yeah. Um, so I wasn't bummed out because I love teaching people games. I want more people to come join this hobby. But I did miss the finale and I didn't know what happened when somebody actually played out the full game. So I was super excited to get this in the mail. And when I played it with my partner, it was everything that I hoped it would be wrapping up the game. It's super simple and there are only a few things that you had to look up, but it didn't take you long and that's the sweet spot for me. I want to have enough choice, choices that keep the game interesting, but I don't want to be bogged down by so much information and Alien Frontiers does that so well. The production quality, top notch. The gameplay, top notch. And I think the replayability, there's so many different strategies you can do, that is also 
top notch. There were just a few things that I didn't like. Some of the card powers yeah, rubbed me the wrong way when they were, I didn't really like use them or have them used against me. And uh, the board took up a lot of space. So, and that's not a bad thing. It's just, I play in a room that has a limited space. So I have to pull out more tables if I have a bigger board, but that is just a personal quibble. And that is what brings it down the few points that makes it from being a perfect game. In my opinion, of course, this isn't really my style of game. I do like dice games, but assigning and gather gathering materials, it's a game that, you know, is in my wheelhouse, but not something that it's going to blow my mind. But this one does it so perfectly and elegantly that it made me want to play it again right after we played the first game and I wound up playing it five times before this review. It's super super simple and super easy and super awesome just to play with the bits and thank you so much for joining me in today's review because I recommend this game highly to anyone who likes board games and if you like playing if you have an interest entry way like if you have friends who just like playing Catan this is a perfect game to kind of segue them into bigger games so again thank you so much for joining me in today's review uh, Starling Games thank you I mean just just thank you and Fine Nation you are the best YouTube fandom out there and my name is Dave and until the next time that I see you have a great rest of your day and a great time with all the alien frontiers that you play. I'm out everybody. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.